called Greyhound. It stars Tom Hanks. It's about uh, World War II and the Navy giving escorts across the English Channel to get the supplies overseas to the, the soldiers and the people overseas that are needing these supplies. And the German U-boats knew that this was a supply line, so they would uh, come in and they would attack the uh, ships to uh, disrupt the supply lines, so uh, the Navy gave escorts to get the uh, ships across the channel safely. Uh, during World War II, there was 3,500 ships, supply ships, lost crossing the English Channel. There was 72,000 souls lost during this time, during World War II. So you got to remember that the supply ships, they were usually uh, civilian merchant ships that were getting the supplies across, and the people that were working on those ships were also civilians. So uh, just remember, there's a lot of people went on to help during World War II to, uh, to help out, uh, cause to help freedom out uh, during World War II. Uh, if we look at the first clip. Right, standard rudder. Right, standard rudder, aye, aye sir. All right, stay sharp. Rapid maneuvers, let's plot it. Aye, aye sir. Contact indefinite, no high sonar reports. Contact indefinite, no propeller noise. Contact for main, starboard, zero two, four, 800 yards, sir. Contact main, starboard, zero one, one, starboard, zero one, one, rate 700 yards, sir. Right, standard rudder. Right, standard rudder, aye, aye, sir. 
Contact bearing starboard. Contact bearing starboard 012, range 600 yards, sir. Mr. Lopez, stand by with a medium pattern. And I'm ready, sir. Contact bearing port 001. Sir, reports contact bearing port 001, range 500 yards, sir. Contact bearing 001. Contact bearing port 001, range 400 yards, sir. It's going dead slow, sir. Contact bearing dead ahead. Contact bearing dead ahead, range 300 yards, sir. Contact inside minimum sonar range. Contact inside minimum sonar range, sir. Hydrophone strong, very strong. Hydrophone strong, very strong, sir. Overrepping screws, overrepping screws, sir. He's trying to slip under us. Now, Mr. Lopez. Roll on fire, medium pattern. Roll on fire. Put in our path. No matter how good we think things are, there's going to be a trial that comes up and it's put into our path. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. In verse 4. And the steadfastness having fulfilled a full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. There's going to be trials. But God's given us tools and equipment to help us through these trials. And you've always heard the deal about putting on the whole armor of God. Let's look at what that means. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. It says, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He's going to try to do everything in his power and scheme to get you away from God. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This is not a war of the flesh and blood type where there's guns and weapons and ammunitions and things like that. This is a spiritual battle. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers, against the present darkness, and, against, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly. We're fighting these trials all the time. It says, against the rulers, against the authorities, we have some rulers and authorities that are trying to take away some of our freedoms. Where do we stand? We got to fight, but God's given us the ability to fight. If we'll go to the next slide. Verse 13, so therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand firm. We got too many people and we got too many pastors and we got too many things going on now in this country that says it's okay for same-sex unions. We got preachers that are saying it's okay. But it's not okay according to God's word. But where are you standing? Are you standing on the faith and believing in God's word? That's another scheme of the devil to get you to think, oh, well, they have rights too. I'm not bashing anybody. I love everybody. I want everybody to know Christ the way I know Christ. God said, love the person, hate sin. We're to love our neighbors. We don't have to condone the sin that they do. Keep going. Stand there for having fastened the belt of truth. Put on the belt. Tuck things away. Get everything situated so nothing gets in your way. So when you start fighting... Your arms are free to fight. 
and having put on the blessed breastplate of righteousness. They wore a best breastplate to help uh, lessen the blow of a sword when it came across. It was usually made out of leather and some metals. So when it came across your chest, it would cut the leather first before it cut your skin. And you've heard the saying, do you want to be right or do you want to be righteous? I'd better read be righteous, then I'll be right. When you start saying it's okay for people to do what they want to and be in the flesh all the time, instead of standing on God's word, you're taking off your breastplate. And as shoes for your feet, having putting on a readiness given by the gospel of peace. God gives us the peace to make it through. Verse 16. In the circumstances, take up the shield of faith in which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Put on your shield. Carry your shield with you. Because there's fiery darts coming at us all the time. No matter what we think, things are going, there's fiery darts coming at us. And if he can't get to us, he's going to get to somebody you know. If he can't get to me, he's going to get to Anita or my mom. He may not be able to get to me, but he's going to get to one of them. If he gets to one of them, then he can get to me. He weakens the defenses of others to get to you. What do you need to do? You need to help out your friends. You need to come alongside them or even get in front of them with your shield to help them deflect them fiery darts. Verse 17. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is is the word of God. Take up your sword. Take up your sword. This is the only perfect weapon that you need to fight Satan with, is the word. When Jesus came out off the mountain after 40 days and Satan attacked him, with different things, different temptations. Jesus used the word against him. And he had to flee. When you're going into a trial and you start using your sword, it's pretty easy to swing this thing when you're first going into trial. You can do a whole lot of stuff with it. You can flip it around, you can sew it. As that trial goes on, though, the sword gets heavy. It gets heavy. And then you start gripping it with two hands. The sword is the most perfect weapon to use against Satan because it's more powerful than any word Satan has. Let's go to the next clip. Greyhound. 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 This is Greyhound. Folks, switch TBS traffic to channel Zebra. Execute. Satan is always looking to kill. First Peter five, verses eight and nine. Be so reminded. Be watchful. 
Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Verse 9. Resist him, fame firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Remember, you ain't in a trial by yourself. In the same trial that you're going through, your brother's been through it too. Your neighbor sitting right beside you in the church has, has been through this trial or going through a trial. pastor down at First Baptist, he's been through a trial, been through the same trial you're going through, or is going to go through another trial. The one down at Shiloh Baptist, been the same way. We are all been in a trial. But if we stand firm in our faith and use the word of God, use our sword, we can make it through this trial. But we have to, to use it. We can't just sit there and look at it on the shelf and say, well, it's there if I need it. There ain't a day goes by I don't need mine. I've got a, uh, we got, at work, we got this thing we call the party line. There's about six or eight of us that drive truck cost crunching. We're always on the phone all day long with each other, and we call it the party line. And they started including me and calling me and getting me in on the, this party line call so we can talk back and forth during the day. And uh, since that time, they, they, they started calling me the preacher. So when I, I call in or I get on there, they say, all right, we've got to behave now. The preacher's on the line. And I tell them, don't let me be the one that stops you. I don't want to be the one that stops them. I want God to be the one that stops them. Because if they're doing it for me, that's not, that's not good enough. They got to do it for God. The trial that you go through, you don't need to do it because I said pick up the sword. You need to do it because God said pick up the sword. God's given you everything you needed right here in this to destroy the enemy. Enemy. There's no other book that you need. There's no other weapon that you need. This is the most perfect weapon to fight with. That's why you need to read this. Know this. Know how to use this. There's a concordance in the back of your Bible, in most of them. If you know a certain word or certain phrase of how the Bible verse goes, you can look in your concordance, you can look at that. Use your sword. Um, let's go to the next clip. granted. She's been a good home, sir. It's been an honor sailing with you. We'll be praying for you. Godspeed, Captain. Thank you. Her job well done. Thank you, Cleveland. I'm good, sir. Thank you. Sir. I need Mr. Cole. See me, Skip? Our lost eagle, Harry and Dickie are low on depth charges and 
and fuel, as are we, but can offer only scant protection to the convoy. We need air cover, Charlie. Do I break radio silence with a message to the Admiralty? Or does that let the wolf pack know just how vulnerable we are? What would the message be? Help needed urgent. No, help needed, that means urgent. Needed isn't needed. It's help. That's all the Admiralty needs to hear for a modified rendezvous point. The Germans might miss a message as short as that. I wouldn't need to take this risk if I'd been smarter yesterday. What you did yesterday got us to today. Not enough, Charlie. Not nearly enough. Message from the Admiralty, sir. When we get in a fight, we need to call in for air cover. We need to call in for help. Psalms 18, 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. We need to call in for the air support. We need to call in for help. We need to take refuge when we are in a trial. My shield in the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Verse 3, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. When we call in the air support, we're asking God to help us. We're taking refuge in him. God's given us the promise that he will help us. We have to call upon him. He will save us from our enemies. That's picking up the sword and saying, I need help. You also have help at your church. God has called the elders to help. That's why you're to come to the elders and ask them, pray for me. I'm, I'm sick. I need help. I'm going through a trial. I need help. My finances ain't what they're supposed to be. Can you help? Can you pray for me? That's what the elders are here for, is to help. It's okay to come to church with a trial. It's not okay to leave this church with ask, without asking for help. Because that's why God's put these people in, in place, is to help. And to be your support, to be your air cover. That's why we're here. Come to church with a trial and be in a trial. Don't leave with that same problem trying to handle it on your own because you can't. God's called, God called me to preach eight years ago. Thought I could handle it on my own. Guess what? I can't. I can't hardly talk in public, but through God, I can. I'm standing up here today because God has called me. God don't call the equipped. He equips the called. If God's calling you to work in a, in a uh, Sunday school class or with the kids or on a chuck wagon or to sing or to do whatever, God's calling you for a purpose. And yes, those are trials you go through because I guarantee you when God calls you to preach or teach or to sing or to help out or to do this, the first thing you're going to do is say, whoa, I can't do that. That's not within me. If it wasn't within you, God wouldn't call you to do it. It is within all of us to answer the call. And God's not going to ask you something 
that you don't want to do. But God will equip you when he calls you to do that job. Let's go to the next clip. comes at you, fight with all you have. I don't know if you could tell it or not, but on that, that submarine when they blew it up, if you if you look close enough, I don't know if you could see it or not, but they had the gray wolf painted on the side of that sub. That was the gray wolf that was in that radio transmission that said, we we're, we're going to kill you. In the last clip, you saw where they was... He was talking about asking for help and air cover. And he was telling the XO that uh, they was down on depth charges and their ammunition was real low. And they didn't have a whole lot to fight with. But you noticed in that fight scene, they took everything they had left and fired it at the sub everything they had left and if you notice when he when he got clear of the the two the first two torpedoes and he turned the ship towards the sub 
I, did you hear what he said? He said, we'll ram this thing if we have to. He's using everything that he's got left, including the ship, to get that sub. Often or not, we are too quick to be in a trial and things get heavy and things get tired and we get tired and the first thing we want to do is take our sword and throw it down. I can't do this. This is too much. I give up. I quit. I ain't doing this no more. But I got my shield and I'll fight off them fiery darts with it. Next thing you know, they take their shield and they throw it down on the ground because they're not willing to fight anymore. They're not willing to defend themselves anymore. Next thing you know, the shoes are coming off. The belt's coming off. The helmet's coming off. Pretty soon, they've just given up in the fight. And they're accepting whatever Satan has to tell them. During this COVID deal, you see the numbers. There's a lot of people not here. During this COVID deal, we've had a lot of people that are, are staying home because of COVID and this, that. And I understand that. I'm not downplaying that at all because COVID is a very serious deal. But when you take people and they quit coming to church because they're scared of the COVID, but yet they go to the beach and spend summer vacations, or they go down to Joe's Crab Shack down at the boardwalk. They're not scared of the COVID then because they're dealing with the flesh. They're doing what they fleshly want to do instead of fighting with what they have. They take kids out of school because they don't want their kids to get the COVID. But yet they allow their kids to play soccer. They allow their kids to play football on, on organized sports. My question is, where's the sense in all that? They've given up the fight. They're not willing to fight. They don't want to fight no more. Because they think it's too hard. They throw down their sword. They throw down their shield. And they've given up. We need to get in there and throw everything we have at Satan to be able to come through this trial. We need to pick up our sword and get through it. Next clip. I took a round from the sub on a port side deck. Three were killed. But you all see where they? Yes, sir. Dickie and I fought them out on the surface, and we got them. Uh, my escort group sank three others. Four you, boat. <laughs> Taking the convoy onto Liverpool. You take Dickie and Harry and make best speed to the naval yard in London, Derry. Sir, I request I stay with the convoy. I have 56 hours fuel at economical speed. No, that's an order, Commander. We'll ship the convoy on from here. I need you to take Dickie and Harry back home. They're not fit to stay in the game, understood? Off to Derry with him. Aye, aye, sir. Tell me, Greyhound. Just curious. How many crossings does that make for you? This was my first, sir. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, let's hope next time's a bit easier, eh? That will show, Commander. Thank you, sir. Dickie, Harry, Greyhound. Dickie here. Howdy, eh? You are relieved of your screening duties. Form starboard echelon on me at the head of the convoy. We will depart on 087 for London Bear. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, sir. He's being relieved of duty. And his escorts there, the ones that were helping him, Harry and Dickie, they've uh, sank in four subs during this mission. Messenger. Messenger. Sir. Signal bridge. Send it. Signal bridge. Aye, sir. 
Commodore is signaling five minutes to course change, Captain. Very well. Take us up the lane. When we clear the lead ships, turn right to 087, dodge James, starboard echelon. Aye, aye, sir. Steady on 087, starboard echelon. Helm, mark your head. Mark 083, sir. Very well. Keep her so. Steady as I go. Aye, sir. Carling, she's all yours. We'll be in my cabin if you need me. Aye, aye, sir. Celebrate a win. When you've been through the trial and you've come out the other side and God's got you through this, that trial, celebrate a win. 1 Peter 1, 5 and 6. Who by God's power are being guarded through the faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. In this you rejoice through... Though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been you have been grieved by various trials. Rejoice that you come through that trial. James tells us, take a, take count all joy to being in a trial. When we come out the other side, rejoice and be glad in it that you went through that trial, that you came out the other end. Rejoice, be happy, celebrate a win. That's what we're going to do next Sunday. Out at the arena, Thanksgiving celebration, we're going to celebrate a win. We've been through some trials here at Circle J. We started out, when COVID started, we couldn't have church on the inside, so we moved outside and showed it up on the arena. And then we got to move inside. If you notice, the seats are a little bit wider apart. We've done some things. Now we're, it's time to celebrate a win, to have some fun, to, ex, to accept what's, what's going, what's to come, because the, the fight is not over. There's going to be more trials. We need to celebrate a win on this one. Also, one thing to do about celebrating a win and after you celebrate the win is get some rest because you can't fight a trial tired brother Todd this weekend is out in the deer woods sitting in a deer stand he's taking a break he's getting some rest Jesus took a break he went up on the mountain for 40 days and got him some rest. Because when he came down off that mountain, he went into another trial. Jesus knew the importance of taking a break and getting some rest. And we need to follow his example and do the same thing. I encourage all the leadership to take a break and get some rest. Because if they don't take a break and don't get some rest, they get burned out. And then there's no, there's no use to Circle J. There's some leadership that you'll see this, that's coming up missing for a while that they're taking breaks. I'm taking a break. 
and some others are taking breaks through the next couple months because we've been in this trial for so long, we need to take a break. And if you take a break and take some rest, my deal is, listen to me now, don't come to Circle J when you're taking a break. Because the first thing that's going to happen when you walk through that back door back there is you're going to get hit with something else as soon as you walk through that door. Go to church with a family member. A different church, not this one. Take a break. Because I guarantee you, and it's happened to me before, I've taken a sabbatical and I I came to church one Sunday because I wanted to come to my church. And the first thing that happened as soon as I walked through the door, Brother Tony, can you? And it hit me. I'm in the wrong place. Now I'm not on my break. Now Satan done put me in another trial and I ain't even rested up from the one I just got out of. Take a break. Get some rest. Celebrate a win. When you get in a trial, pick up your sword. This is the most perfect weapon against Satan. Let's go to the Lord and ask Him. to help with the trials. If you're going through a trial right now, would you raise your hand so I can pray for you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're lost here today, you're in a trial right now trying to figure out whether you want to accept Christ or not. And if you are that person, would you raise your hand? Thank you. Y'all pray with me as, as we pray today. Call in the air support. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. And help them through a trial. Lord, I come to you right now and Lord, you saw the ones that raised their hands that are going through a trial. And Lord, I'm asking you to protect these in their trial. Lord, that they come out the other side. And Lord, with you that they're calling in the air support, that they may, that you may help them. Lord, they raised their hands and asking for air support. And that's what I'm doing. I'm asking you to give them their air support, Lord, that they will make it through. Lord, if there's one here that's lost, Lord, I ask you to say this, have them say this prayer with me that says, Lord, I know I'm a sinner, and Lord, I'm calling in air support. Lord, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I want you to forgive me of my sins. And Lord, I believe in you. Lord, save me from this trial. Lord, once again, I just want to thank you for the ones that are here today. Lord, thank you for the ones that are watching on Facebook. And Lord, the ones that are going to watch next week on the Internet. Just thank you. Bless them that are here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Uh, We're going to take up an offering. Uh, guys be at the back with the buckets uh, next Sunday we're going to do a legacy offering uh, y'all pray about what God wants you to, to do above and beyond what your normal tithes and offerings are like I said this is not to get caught up we want to do more than just get caught up we want to reach 60 in this country or in, in this area in this region so let's go to the Lord and uh, ask him to bless our finances Lord, I come to you, and Lord, I want to thank you for...
the many blessings that you give us. Lord, I'm praying for our finances, Lord, that you give more abundantly so we can go out and reach 60. And Lord, bless the ones that are giving. And Lord, that you would touch the hearts of those that would give more abundantly so we can go out and reach 60. Thank you.